Uh, if we look at hijab today, mm -hmm. and uh, if we see that in the Western countries or um, in countries where there is a democratic government, where there is um, uh, freedom of speech, where there is uh, uh, opportunity for women to um, uh, get education and employment, um, what are the challenges uh, for Muslim women um, to get acceptance or to sort of uh, struggle for gender equality within the religious framework? What would be the most important issues for them? What I was saying is if you look at the history of feminism, you will find, and I was saying that women, Muslim women in Western countries have a double battle, on, have to fight on two sides, one against racism and secondly against gender discrimination within the Muslim community. And um, you know, historically, if you look at the history of feminism, you will find that this is, has been the tradition since the rise of feminism. Many, uh, it began with black women, who, because who were the first people in this position, African-American women, I mean, in, in the American context, who were the leaders in, this, in the fighting against white feminism, who were, who were stigmatizing blacks as, you know, they, uh, as, as uh, you know, innately, <laughs> Uh, 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 um, what's the word I'm looking for? That the male, male chauvinism among blacks was worse than among whites, and so on. And black women, very famously, a woman called Audre Lorde. I don't know if you read her work. Yes, you I have. Did, I... So there's a whole lot of women. Mm -hmm. There are uh, Mexican American women. There's, you know, there's I forget her name. Uh, Gloria Anzalu, Anzaldua, yes. mm -hmm. um, Bell Hooks, all yeah. of these have been working in that tradition of contesting the claims of the dominant society as to, as to their secondary status and their infer the inferiority of their culture. Uh, and and, and on, on the other hand, they're fighting with, with the, the men of their community for gender justice. So this, I forget there's a phrase for it. So this, that is right. intersectionality. That's right. That uh, you are discriminated because you're a woman, but also because you're black. That's right. Because so actually, this yeah. tradition is part of the feminist tradition, right, right. that you, you have to, uh, this is the nature of what it is to be uh, non-white in white societies. And, and, and nowadays, you see, again, we have shifting terms. I mean, 20 years ago, the only issue was that you were non-white. Mm, right. And now it's whether you're Muslim in particular. Right, right. Muslim is a very new category to be concerned about. It. Black women, uh, that association with feminism, that, that was on much more secular level. Um, but immediately, the, this shift which is happening towards religion, uh, religion is basically considered to be a very um, um, oppressive element, uh, or, um, even if it's Christianity or yeah. Judaism or <coughs> Islam. See. So, so uh, I think uh, the concern of many women mm. is that uh, how would how do we deal with this shift today? Yes. Um, you know, there is a quite a quite an honorable line of of uh, religious feminist in America anyway, from Judith Plasco, who's you know, a Jewish feminist, to uh, my colleague Elizabeth schusle Ferenza, a Christian feminist, who, who are theologians in, their, in Judaism and Christianity. And they have been fighting against secularism because they see secularism as oppressing them and as uh, too much the dominant culture and that it, it fails to respect different ways of thinking, which are religious ways of thinking. So that's one element. And the other element is uh, now we have a new crop of m Muslim feminists, uh, commi religiously committed, not just people of Muslim background, religiously committed Muslim feminists. And um, certainly they include among them uh, African American who have the tradition of on contesting race and contesting gender, um, and they are committed Muslims. So they are, uh, again, taking a leading role in this, of, of in the fight against both gender discrimination in their communities and against uh, racism in the wider so society. When secularism becomes uh, um, oppressive in a sense that all others are not in, uh, res respected, 
uh, so there is a time to worry about secularism as well because it <laughs> becomes also kind of right. uh, yes. a belief and it yes. also ki kind of uh, fundamentalism in, uh, yes. in itself. But on the other hand, I also see that uh, as, as a kind of progressive elements, I mean, opening towards um, individual freedom, I mean, uh, uh, the right of the individual to decide things yeah. instead of thinking in groups. And uh, uh, so religious ideologies are often uh, kind of, um, although individual is important, but yeah. mostly uh, there are certain kind of uh, values uh, which individual has to submit and uh, there I feel a little worried about this um, women's position, mm -hmm. like how we would uh, achieve gender equality, what are the issues Muslim women are taking up within the religious uh, um, framework? Well, the issues, I, I mean, again, I, I, I will tell, answer you, but the thing is, I think they apply across the board. I don't think it's just Islam, but I'll tell you how they apply in Islam. But I mean, for one thing, uh, I mentioned in my talk yesterday that the interpretation of a particular verse. Are men per permitted to beat women or not? Who, in, who has the right to, as I said, uh, 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 one of the uh, uh, women of today who published a new translation of the Quran uh, three years ago, um, is arguing that, that trans uh, the translation which says you may beat them is a mistaken, is a wrong. This is not what the word means. So if women are in a position to, to, argue, to discuss, to, you know, to, is this the origin of the word? Is that what the word means or not? That's a very critical fact, and that's just one verse. Any verse which um, it seems to imply patriarchy is brought into question. And if women, women who are committed feminists or committed to women's rights take up these questions, that would instantly make a huge difference. Um, and so this, and, and they can take, they're taking up at the moment, for instance, they want equal rights within the mosque. They want to be able, some, some of course, not all, but some women are demanding that or some demanding um, uh, the right to religious leadership. But th there's no, there's nothing, nothing that cannot be contested because after all, any scripture secular or religious, I would say, yeah. is a matter, you, you know, the, the American Constitution is a secular uh, scripture. How you interpret it, what it means in legal terms, is debated passionately today. So interpretation is vital. Once you can secure the right to interpretation, that may, makes a huge difference. And by definition, a scripture is something made of words, which is by definition required to be interpreted by people. So this is a very progressive thinking because uh, the words of Quran, yeah. they cannot be changed. No, and uh, uh, everyone is using this argument yeah. to oppress women. So, so reinterpreting the Quran yeah. into uh, a feminist uh, kind of framework, yes, uh, you think that will be acceptable for uh, I don't think it's going male, to be. male dominated no, uh, scholars ma of yes. Islam? No, so many male dominated <laughs> <laughs> patriarchs will not accept it at all, right. but luckily they're not here. But I'm really looking forward to that kind of uh, yeah. w uh, women's movement yes. or uh, feminist thinking oh, in yes. Islam yes. Yeah. Where, where women um, uh, start thinking, reinterpreting the yeah. text of Quran yeah. and uh, also rejecting the uh, notion that the word of God uh, can be interpreted only by male um, right. scholars and not yes. by female scholars. Absolutely, yes. And I think that then we would be able well, to... Well, we're here, it's happened, it's exactly. beginning to happen. So mm -hmm. we have a particularly the younger generation who really, um, you know, they they're in the process of becoming scholars, both of Arabic and Islamic studies and in the, within the Western academic worlds. And I think we are on the brink of a revolution.